be, why do we test with the numbers 1, 2, 3? I guess it's because they're the first three numbers in the... Okay, uh, uh, Streamlabs, not Streamlabs. Uh, Twitch is telling me that we're now live. Hello and welcome to the stream. Um, we're going to continue what we did previously, which is uh, use Basellian elements uh, to determine the parameters of an eclipse. And even though we're sort of looking at the Moon, Sun, Earth here, our ultimate goal is to look at uh, Jovian solar eclipses. Um, so this diagram I'm not terribly happy with for several reasons. Um, partly because we've got a lot of stuff that's in places just by coincidence where it shouldn't be. So I'm going to see if I can do a, a new. And, and I'm going to call it Eclipses 2, and if we really need to... Um, yes, we have it. Good. This is what I wanted. Okay. So what we're going to do here now is... Um, because apparently we, we kind of, I guess, want to um, keep things in integers, or maybe just GeoGebra does, um, we're going to start off with uh, the Earth being uh, like size 3. Oh god, that's big. Fortunately, we can uh, zoom out a little bit. Nope, didn't mean to create a second one. And we will go ahead and paint the Earth uh, green. Sorry, blue. Then we're going to create a, uh, a moon, which I guess we're going to put at... Um, well, we'll color them all in just a second here. I'm going to put here 2, 6, and we're going to give it a width of about 1. There should be something that actually shows me as I draw this out what value I'm using, but I guess not, maybe. And we will go ahead and move this. Nope, 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 nope. Gotta love it. Okay. And now um, I am going to try to move these points so that they are uh, above or below... Does it actually tell me where D is going? I guess it would be if I were looking at the left-hand panel, which maybe I should make a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, we will fix all of this here in just a second um, to be exact values instead of uh, some partial values. Um, in Basilian, we always have the x-axis lined up, so our sun is going to be like this, and I'm going to make it bigger than our Earth. Um, I guess we'll make it a lot bigger than Earth. Okay. Fantastic. Now we need to move some stuff around to make this look a little bit better. Um, oh, have I... Yeah, there we go. All right, so let's make sure all of these points are, like, aligned. Zero, zero, that's fine. B is going to be at three. It's the... Really? Is there a way to force this into? No, it is not. So I think there's a way to force this into, like, Snap 2 mode or something where you could just, uh, you know, because it seems to do that sometimes when it wants to and other times when it does that other times uh, when you don't want it to. So we're going to just stick to that, except maybe we will do this correctly. Come on! Seriously? Seriously? Okay, there we go. Okay, and then the radius of the circle is 9. That's fine. We will go ahead and make the circle blue. Blue-ish, at least. That's a nice, lovely blue. And we'll make it... Where is my opacity? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I want to choose the circle. Circle be blue. And we'll make it give it about a 50% opacity there. Um... Wow. And again, this would really be nice if it told me where exactly I, my sweat setting was. Okay, that's fine. Then our next circle here is going to be... the moon, which is normally considered to be... Well, actually, we, I guess we need to fix these points, too. So it's going to be 6, 1. I guess I should probably be a little bit more consistent in terms of which what I'm doing where. Um, let's take a look at this circle. Let's make it green, like in green cheese. And we'll... Uh, no, 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 no. I said green. And we'll give it about that 
sort of opacity there. E is 14, comma, that is the sun. And I guess I... That is just strange. Well, if I'm going to make it a size of... Hang on. Hang on. Let me go ahead and get rid of this and see what we're doing here. Let's get rid of this real quick. Okay. And we do want to move F to B so it's below that. Um... Yes, okay. Uh, so that is going to be, F is going to be at 14 minus 4. That's a radius of 6, by the way. Um, now there's something I'm, I'm worried about already. We're going to be drawing a line from there to there. Hmm. There to there. Okay, well, maybe we'll figure this out. Okay, so now when you look at the circle, at least color this correctly. Um, and give this sun a nice yellowish color. Actually make it a little bit darker. It's hard to see. Okay. And there we have it. And I kind of want to do a checkpoint save here. Um... Hopefully this will let me continue to edit it after I've done the save. Okay, cool. Alright. So now we're going to draw... Now the, the idea behind Basilian is, of course, that uh, the centers of the two uh, points are lined up. Uh, we're now going to add two more points. Oh God, I hope this works. Um, and we're going to add a point here and a point here. And I think we're, we want to make sure that they're um, sort of opposite points of the other ones. In other words, they're also on the edge of the circle. Uh, 5.9, nope, that's going to be 6. Come on. What the hell? It's a point on D. It's going to be 6, 3. Okay, now it's unhappy. Why? Oh, what does point D mean anyway? Well, I don't know what that means, but you're getting deleted. I'm going to create a point just over here. That's going to be our G. And I'm going to move it so you are uh, at 6, 3 where you belong. Which I guess is, I guess it's not attached to, to D anymore, but it it is going to be on top of D. And we're going to draw another point here, which I guess is going to be, really, I... Uh, okay. Oh wait, I'm sorry, we already drew our point here. Uh, H. Oh cool! So H, we should be able to make H exactly 14. Or we can actually delete H. And delete this and create another H. And this H we can make where we want it to be. I guess the only problem is it's not being attached to the, the sun is the only issue. And that is going to be at 14, 8. Okay, fantastic. All right, so... Uh, the concern I had earlier is we're, we might end up drawing something that doesn't actually reach the Earth. We will have to just deal with that. Um, so... We're going to draw the lines for the umbral cone. And they're going to go from here. To there. And then we're going to go from H F to D. And boy, that's a tiny little umbral cone there. Um, let's see. 
I think we can make the sun one element smaller. Um, I actually think if we made the sun, yeah, if we made the sun smaller, that might have an effect here. So let's, uh, E is 14, 2, F is 14, let's go from minus 4 to minus 3, maybe? Um, now we have the problem that there is... that we, uh, in the umbral cone, we are no longer cutting off the sun entirely. The sun is too big for that. Um, oh, hello, hello, we have a visitor. What's up, my dude? X-R-I-C-A-R-D-2-X. I'm going to print that out because, hell, even I don't know what it is. Um... This guy. This is the guy you should follow right here. Right here. Hey, how's it going, man? Any comments, questions? Any um, any help with this hideous mess that we're having here? Um, now, at one point, we used the arc sign like we we're using here, and then this would be an arc sign as well. Um, So the point would not be, ooh, I need to get rid of this line. Um, so we had this point basically, you know, this is the point that controls where the line, where the circle is. We basically had it so the, the uh, it went through the, um, the tangent line as viewed from here, as opposed to the, the uh, hyperbolic sine line. Sorry. It runs with the arc sine or the arc tangent. Um, so I'm not happy. So we can put this back down here. And then I guess we don't need to draw this line. We can delete this line. Delete this line. And then actually draw the line that is um, from here. Um, touches the arc tent that touches this in one point instead of in two points. So let me see if I can get that going here. Um, yeah, something like this that touches the arc signs of both. Like this and then honestly like I don't know. Okay, this is getting complicated again. Let's go ahead and delete that. Undo that, undo that, undo that. Okay. So, um... So we sort of want the line that goes from F through D and continues onwards till it hits a point somewhere. And then the line from H through G until it hits a point somewhere. But that's not quite correct. We actually want this where um, the line to be drawn where it is um, tangent to both of these, not... Um, yeah, okay, I think I figured this out. Um, Let's see. We know this is the x value, so we know this is going to go. Um, maybe I haven't figured it out. <sighs> so I was hoping we just draw the straight lines uh, perpendicular to the x axis, which means on the y axis. Just draw a line from h to g here and from f to d, but the problem is that actually cuts through. The, the middle of the sun, which d it doesn't work. We actually need it to be so that this is a right angle, and so that this 
is a right angle and it actually cuts through this right angle here um, so let's see if we can find those points um, somehow um, so the question is what point from here cuts off the uh, makes this a um, makes this a right angle um, and from here so, so that's an interesting question um, So let's see. So we want a point uh, from G that touches this at exactly one point. Okay. Um, I think we can do that. All we need to say is we're going to start at G, touch at one point, which we're going to have to be a little bit approximate here. But Actually, I can probably do it a little bit better if I do it like this. Okay. And then we're going to move point I. Um, we're going to get rid of point J. We're going to move point I now uh, so it is at the tangent point. So I think now we're back in business. Um, right there. So GIE is a right, is a rect is a right triangle. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing on this end here. Wait. So do we want this actually to be like tangent to both of these? And that does seem more reasonable. But the question is, um, what does this actually mean? Where is this line? Um, so it's a line that touches both of the circles tangentially. Um, but aren't there a million lines that do that? No, I guess not. I guess the B is only one line that touches both circles at only one point. And then obviously there's the flip of this line that does that as well. Um, so let's see if we can, um, uh, let's see. Because it seems like there's more than one line that'll do this, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Um, so let's see, that's just for you, okay. All right, now I did say earlier we're not gonna use uh, Mathix again because it sucks and it does suck but we are going to use it but not from a uh, server point of view we're just going to use it as a uh, from the um, from the command line and so I think that's maybe okay um, and let's see eclipse diagram um, okay and we had a whole bunch of diagrams here so this is probably not the right way BC eclipse mechanics I think is the one we didn't really overuse yet um, it's pretty short, and we did use all, okay, good, yeah, so we did do this. Um, so let's see, S, so the S emits, T does not emit, and S is potentially eclipsed on Q by T in the below, are the distance between the centers of the spheres, so I think we can reduce this problem to two dimensions here. Um, are the distances between the centers of the spheres. They necessarily form a plane without loss of general you can coordinate five for the plane. Cure the origin. Um, and here's where we need to make a little change. Q to be on the origin, S to be, S and T to have the same Y coordinate and have, well, we already said we're in the plane, so. So that's where we're making a slight difference. So the angular radius uh, which we don't care about is that. So any any line can be represented as um, well, let's see. A line is m times x plus b. That's any line can be represented that way. Um, so if we have a known point here, 
Um, let's see, we have a known we have a known sphere here that is at this point and this point. Let's just uh, let's just take a look here. Um, line okay, so that's the line of m x and b is written as m times x plus b. We want to know its distance from these two points here, which are S Q are the distance between the center of the spheres. Um, that's fine. That's probably not fine. We'll deal with that in just a sec. Um, what we do want, though, is the um, the y value. Is the shared y value of S and T, uh, center of the spheres of of the centers of this, no, that's fine, of, of S and T. So it's this Y value right here, okay? Um, so we will have, um, yeah, and since we're on the origin, SX is the um, X value of the center of S. Um, and Tx is the x value of the center of T. So I think we're all good to go there. So usually a line will touch a circle in two points or zero points. So this line, for example, will touch this circle in two points, but will touch the sun in no points. Uh, this line will touch the circle in two points here, but not the circle at all. Uh, so what we're trying to do is find a line that has the properties that it touches both of these at exactly one point. And the way we're going to do that, and that shouldn't be too hard. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve where um, uh, the uh, the distance from this line, the li any point on the line can be represented as x comma mx plus b. Um, so no, we'll just put that in comments because it's not really a, a valuable thing, a valid instantiation, a valid uh, expression in mathx. Um, and its distance from um, its distance from sphere T is going to be uh, x minus Tx squared plus the difference in the y coordinates m times x plus b uh, minus y, which is the shared y value squared. So that's the distance, and we want to know when that distance is exactly equal to it, so it's touching the sphere, which means the distance is equal to tr, the radius of t. So I think we can solve that with um, with mathics. I hope we can solve that with mathics, because we're going to try to solve it with mathics. And that is not a tremendously difficult problem to solve. So what this does. With respect to x, I guess? Okay, and there are two solutions as we expect. We want to find a value of, um, we want to find, well, let's just see what the two solutions are. So we're going to say, let's go ahead and actually do a little bit of work here. Um, so let's call it that with respect to x. And then, um, okay. So now if we take t the first and the second solution and subtract them, we will get the term mo. We will get nothing, so hang on. Uh, so we can do x given this, there's that expression, minus x given the second expression. And what I'm hoping to see is that we'll get a lot of cancellation here. and. There we go. So this is the term uh, that is different among the two of them. This is the thing that needs to go to zero. Um, so this is only zero. Now this this actually can't be um, obviously one plus m squared can't be zero because m is a real number. Um, so I guess I need to put this in here somewhere, don't I? Um, We 
we'll call this value t1803 equals, and we'll go ahead and do the simplify on it. Okay. Now there are still several lines that will touch this at exactly one point, but when we add in the restriction for s, we should be able to get, what the hell? Um, no. We literally just did this here. Not the fee, simply fee. Okay, that's weird. Let me try that again. Uh, it looks like we got a simpler answer than we got a more complicated answer. So let's do that. That's our solution. Two solutions there, not a problem. Then we're going to take the difference of them and simplify that difference. That's weird. It was something simpler than this. Um, could have sworn we had something simpler than this. I don't know what's going on. If we add them, by the way, we will get... Um, we will get rid of the middle term. Or apparently we will not. Okay, this kind of bugs me that the sum and difference are the same exactly. So I think maybe this is a glitch in Mathix. So why don't we go ahead and be, do a little bit, be a little bit more nicer about this. Uh, we will assign additional variables here. T1802. This will become 4 now. 1803 equals x given 1801, 2. So it'll be the, uh, the second solution, first solution, and then we'll subtract the two solutions. Really bad news here that this is being this ugly. So let's try this again. I do need to find a better free symbolic math mathematical thing in my job. Okay. These are should be slightly different from each other. Yeah, there it is. The plus and the minus is the thing that's different. And that's what is going to cancel out when we do this. And I probably should have put that simplify in front of that. And this is going to have a fairly simple form here. There we go. So this is the number that... Um, Right, so if we, this gets rid of the, the terms that don't change. This gives us the terms that do change. Um, now I'm, I'm worried about that now. So minus, so these things should cancel. And yet it looks like we're getting the wrong thing here. It looks like... If we add these, the square roots should cancel out, unless I'm missing a factor somewhere. And if we subtract them... Yep. Um, really, really not good. Um, Not good at all. Okay. So the, the the point is if the square root, if the thing inside the square root here is zero, uh, that's the discriminant, by the way, uh, then we'll have only one, uh, only one uh, solution to the problem. Um, because then the plus and minus will become just a single, a single plus or minus. So let's see, this is what's inside the square root. Oh, brother. Simplify. Um, that, and that's what we want to solve to be equal to zero for there to be only one solution. There are more than, there's more than one way to do this. And, um, and I guess it wants me to pick something. Give me an M that'll work here. Yeah, that'll work. Um, 
I guess there's two ways of doing this, one coming in from the negative, one coming in from the positive side. Uh, this is bad, though. The fact that we're getting... Um, so when you add them, we should get rid of the square root terms. That's correct. When we subtract them, we should get rid of the non-square root terms. Which is not which is not what's happening here. Uh, according to this, the sum and the difference is the same, which is uh, unlikely, um, unless t t no three is zero, which I don't think it is always. Um, so this is um, this is verging on being kind of useless here. Um, so let's cheat and go to Wolfram Cloud, which I don't care too much for, but I think maybe for this very limited, um, it's very limited case, we might we might be okay with it. Uh, unfortunately, because mathics is so terrible, we do need to find a better solution here. I think, sort of unquestionably. New notebook, and let's see here. Yeah, copy, paste. Um, okay, ugly, but not too ugly. Let's go ahead and put this in here. And those are just assignments, so that shouldn't really do anything. I mean, it should do something. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so now the sum of these two things, and Wolfram Cloud might be smart enough to simplify on its own. I'm hoping we don't have to give it an additional simplify. So this, I guess, did not go through. And so now we can do this. Oh, I didn't simplify that. These two things will cancel, but let's go ahead and simplify that. Ta-da! Um, so that's what you get if you cancel out the square root terms. But of course, what we want is to know where the square root terms are. Uh, we want to know we want to know when the square root terms are the same, which means three. There we go, and we need to know when that's equal to zero. Um, so we can do, and we're going to be kind of cheating and not specify which variable we want to solve for. It will, oh yeah, we can't solve for TR though, because that's, uh, that's one of our givens. Um, so let's solve that for M. Okay, ugly, but nothing wrong there. Um, now we need to do the same calculation for S. Um, and here's where we can be kind of clever. T1811 equals solve, um, x minus sx squared plus m times x plus b minus, remember that this is a shared value of y that they have. That's what, that's why this is interesting. This is why this is useful. And do we have, for some reason these aren't quite lining up and it kind of bugs me, but anyway. And in this case, we want it to be distance SR from, uh, from, from S. Okay, see what this does. Um, um, let's put semicolons in front of this and it'll just kind of... Nice, okay. And so now we can say t1812 equals, I've uh, got to be careful here. Yeah, we need four values here for, um, yeah, so I think we can actually just pull this into, um, pull this up here, pull this up here, and, 
Okay. And then yeah, so this is the term. This is the term here that we want to be equal to zero. That is one of the terms that is. Come on, what the hell? Can we gonna cut and paste? So let's put this over here. Okay, so this is the um it's actually twice the, but we'll go ahead and divide by two in front of it. This is the discriminant for um, t. We'll call it disk t. Uh, so this is the thing that uh, is a plus or minus, which if this is equal to zero, we will have only one solution. Okay. So now t1804 is going to be x given t1811. So these are the two solutions for um, and t1805 equals x given t1811 two. So these are going to be the two solutions for uh, for s. And now we can compute the disk of s equals simplify t1804 minus t1805, and we'll divide it by two, even though it doesn't really matter. And now we can actually look at disk t and disk s. These are the two things that if they're equal to zero, uh, we have only one solution. Okay. And I don't know why there's an out 15 here. Did I leave out? I left off the semicolon, that's why. Let's do this again. Okay, awesome. And so we now have these two strange looking things that um, uh, that tell us when there there's two solutions. There's one solution when both of these th for each equation when these are equal to zero. So when this is equal to zero, there's only once, th uh, the line only touches uh, t once. This is equal to zero, the line only touches s once. So of course what we want, um, we want to solve when both of them are equal to zero. And we want to solve that for, and there still might be two solutions here, but I think they're going to be um, or zero solutions here. Okay. I might need to use reduce here instead of solve. So disk. Let's just see if we can get a solution for one of these suckers. Okay. And. And there should be a solution for both. There, I mean, there is a way to do this. All right, we're gonna have to use reduce instead of solve, which gives us special case um, solutions when certain values are equal to certain other values. It's thinking. Now, there's one kind of issue we might have here, which is, um, I guess we can add to here the reals because we're only dealing in real numbers. So let's go ahead and do this. Hit shift. Um, large output, that's just never good. Um, Can we see this output, please? We've apparently... This should not be that hard. I mean... Let me delete some of this other stuff here real quick. Um, I guess cut's the best one to be able to do here. Um, I want to actually delete these suckers. This computation has exceeded the time limit for your plan. Seriously? That is not a hard freaking problem.
All right, let's try it this way. Uh, first, can we get rid of all this crap here? I mean, just like delete. Oh, good, there we go. Delete, delete. Much nicer, and we're going to go ahead and delete. Delete you, and you, and even you, little foo-foo. Okay, so why don't we instead look at um, them one at a time, and then combine the solutions. So let's first solve disc the discriminant of t is equal to zero over the reals. We'll even give that a name. And then we will say t1819 equals solve disk s equals equal zero for m over the reals. And I probably should have um, And I guess we're going to have to put in some conditions here. Um, okay. And I guess we might have to put in some conditionals here because... Let's see, 18, 18, let's see what that looks like. M goes to conditional expression. If that is true, different conditional expression. That looks very similar, by the way. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be something plus or minus this hideous thing here. Um, so under the conditions that 0 is less than TR of plus this crap, plus y squared, plus what? Plus what's the, what's the end of this here? Plus y squared. Okay, that looks, these look to me like they're the same freaking condition. Uh, so conditional expression, da 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 da. Okay. Mm, this bugs me. Why? Why are there two solutions here? Okay. Let's just look at one of them. And now I'm trying to get into this little piece here that is um, that that's sort of outside the conditional expression. That didn't help at all. Let's try this. Okay, that's not what we wanted. We want point two, which I think is the uh, conditional expression part. Okay, awesome. And I think of, of that we want part one, although that might just be the word conditional expression. Ah, uh, there we go. That's what we want. Okay, so that is, um, that's one value of m. The other value of m that's possible, and again, I'm assuming that we're, we're kind of ignoring the, uh, the other solutions here. Ah, uh, there we go. That's, that's looking much better. And so what we want is for these two, two to be equal, of course. We want, because they're both equal to m, we need to find out what value of b makes these equal. So let's call this t1820, t1821, and then t1822 equals solve uh, t1820 equal equal t1821 for b. Not the greatest expression in the world. Um, this is freaking hideous. There's four answers here, apparently. And they're all pretty damn ugly. Um, and that's not really even supposed to be that hard of a problem. Okay, so I'm, I'm convinced this is not the best answer we can be getting here. Um, so we can solve the value of x that does this. 
find the discriminant, uh, which is disk T. My God. Um, set disk t equal to zero um, just amazing though um, I mean this this is freaking insane Okay, and the problem is I don't even think this is that hard of a problem. I mean, we have Tx here, we have Mx plus B minus the T, which the Ty, which is the shared, uh, the, which is the shared coordinate Y, uh, and we want it to be a distance of Tr, and we want the case where there's only one solution, which occurs when dis T is equal to zero. So that's T18 and 18. Let's take a look at T. I'll see how horrible this is. Um, wow. That is just insanely ugly for something this simple. Hmm. Maybe if we solved it for B, you think? Maybe? What's the, what's the what's the intercept if we know m? I don't think it's going to be any better, but well, that's actually a lot better. That's actually a lot better. Um, and I think we can actually specify that tr because it's a radius. It is going to be bigger than zero. So we we're back to business. Um, so we're going to put in something called con. Oh no, you wouldn't do that there. Way at the top, we're going to put in something called cons for conditions. And one of them is going to be that TR is bigger than zero, SR is bigger than zero. So then we can say, um, um, yeah. So then we could do this, which actually doesn't help that much as I was hoping it would. Cons, and so now we shouldn't. We should get rid of the conditional expression. It should just show us that, um, ooh, did not like that at all. Okay, so let's not do that. Let's see what happens if we remove the word reals from here and allow it to just solve sort of generically. Uh, that might make things better or it might make things worse. Maybe I need to get rid of this, this. Tell me what T1818 is, please. That's not supposed to happen. Let's put this back in here then. Oh, it's, it's doing this little magic here. Wait. I wasn't trying to create additional cells here. Did I actually create an additional cell here? Well, I didn't mean to. So let's go to this. And from here to here. Apparently I asked for this quantity four times. It's not true, actually. Um, okay. Um, and we'll just say solve it given the conditions. Oh. This t equals zero zero. Maybe you can't do that. Oh, 
Okay, that's gorgeous. What, what doesn't it like here? Cannot assign a raw object. I'm not trying to. Oh, wait, 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 wait. That. Okay. That's actually a lot easier. Um, so we solve here. Uh, those are the two solutions where it hits the line. Then we try to find the, um, the case where it only hits the line one time by creating disk T and disk S. Disk T is equal to zero. Disk S is equal to zero. And I don't think we need the reels anymore. So now we might be in better shape here. We can probably go to this, this, and I want to see what the two uh, solutions are here. They should be very similar, obviously, because all we did is change. Um, okay, that is awesome. Um, MTX plus one, Okay, this is good. This looks like we might have a better, better idea here. Okay, so now we want, um, gotta be a little bit careful here. Um, since all of these numbers are B, let's see, T1818, 1, this will give us a little piece of it. Uh, then we want, um, I think we want part two of this expression. No, we do not. Part one. And then part two of this expression, I think. That's what we want. And then what we want is the same thing for the solution for um, for S. That's what we're looking for. And I guess we need to solve the value of M that makes this true. And here's where it's all gonna fall down. Holy shit. That is just insane. Um, and the weird thing is I don't even think, you know, we're not really using that much, um, <sighs> wow. Well, the fact that it has to go into, like, expanded notation, let's just do a show all here. Mother of God. I mean, we could just put this into C form or something and just spit it out there. But Jesus Christ, this is insane. Okay, let's look at our diagram again, see if we have any, in, any inspiration to make this a little bit easier for us, for ourselves. Um... Okay. The answer is no, of course. Um, and we don't know that our, our, our line passes through the origin, by the way. This is just a coincidence that this one happens, too. Um, wow. Is there a better way to do this? Um, I mean, we know the slope, well, we know the slope of the tangent line here is going to be, um, no, actually we don't. There's a ton of lines that'll pass through this, um, this at one point, um, and we're trying to narrow down the, one, the only one that also passes through this at one point. Um, although in both cases we are looking at the positive x direction. So that's, uh, but I don't think that helps us any. Um, 
Hmm. So, I mean, I guess we could use this. I mean... The problem is this is going to be it, very difficult to compute um, every time that we're uh, trying to... Um, Yeah, every, every we can't really afford to compute this value every time we, uh, I don't think we can at least, every single time we call the function Eclipse around the world. Hmm. This is really, really ugly. Now, of course, most of these values are, well, no, they're not even fixed because we, every time we do it, we have a different x value. All right, so let's, let's go back over here. I'm, I'm kind of stuck if anyone has any suggestions, uh, if anyone's out there. Uh, I guess there's three people kind of out there, but if you can help with this, let me know. And the goal is we need to find a line that is tangent to this at one point and tangent to this at one point. Um, because we can't really use the approximation that we can go through the tops of these, which would be a hell of a lot easier, by the way. Um, yeah, but we do need lines that are going to have the property that they are uh, tangent to, uh, to both of these, like this, that they go through this um, point, which we can't really even determine. We know this is a right angle. We know... Oh, wait a minute. You know, this is a right angle. Hmm. So if we know this is a right angle, we know this is a right angle. Um, right angle, right angle. And these are the same. We might have something, actually. Mm. We might have similar triangles here. Um. We know this distance, so this is... This is a very... it's not even really... it's a trapezoid because this side and this side are parallel. Um, but we, but this side and this side aren't parallel, so let's see. So we have this and this being parallel. Um, we know what this side is, that's pretty easy to compute. And... And does that tell us anything? Create a new one of these suckers. Um, yeah, we might have something. Here. We might have a. I mean, it'll it'll be the same answer. Obviously, you can't can't change that. Um, so let's do a circle with the center to a point here. We'll do a circle of radius one, maybe. Sounds about right. Um, over here, we'll do a circle of radius, oh no, it has to have the same y value, a circle of radius uh, more than one, like that. And so now we want a line that is going to be perpendicular to both of these suckers. So now, okay, so now we're going to be a little bit careful here because we are going to create a, a right angle here. So now we're trying to guess at a line that's tangent to both of these. Um, so we might as well do So we'll just start off with this sort of crazy line here. Oh! <laughs> I 
<laughs> this one nailed it on the first go. Let's make this a little bit like this. So there we go. I'm going to move F a little bit up then. That's not bad. Okay, so we have this line that is... And I'm going to move E and F. Oops, 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 oops. Careful. To be... Um, on the tip of that circle. Okay, so that is looking pretty good right now. Uh, that is a line that is tangent to both circles at one point. We can now connect E and A. No, I don't want that. Hang on. Undo. I want a line segment in this case. Okay. Same thing from F to C. Um, and same thing from A to C. So now the question is, and we know this is a right angle, and we know this is a right angle. Um, and we know these angles must add up to uh, 180 because, because the four angles of a quadrilateral add up to 360. Now the question is, does this tell us anything about the lines be uh, the uh, x intercept and or its um, or its slope and now if we were to continue this line so if we were to continue this uh, this sort of line here um, let me put an arbitrary point here where this is equal to 2. Continue this line like this. Okay. So this here and this here are similar triangles. GEA, GFC are similar triangles. Um, We know the length AC, CF, and EA. We know those three lengths. We don't know EF. Um, so we really should be able to find out G from that. Not too, not too difficult there. Um, Hmm. Tempted to draw lines from here to here and here to here, but I don't think that's going to be helpful actually. Um. So if we know. Yeah, so if we know the reduction in size from, from C to A here, which we do. Um, because it goes from TR to SR. I guess we can actually find this angle too if we wanted to. Um, this angle would be let's see drop a perpendicular here uh, that doesn't really help us uh, can we use Pythagoras' theorem? So well, we don't know the length of the hypotenuse. We do know the length of one side. And we do not know this length either. We, they're, they're probably related to each other, but we don't know them right off the top of our heads. So this... Oh, but we do have two nice equations here. Uh, we have this squared plus this squared equals this. This squared plus this squared equals this. Um, that has too many unknowns in it that would be helpful. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, there seems like there's a real... If 
we go from C to A, we get a decrease of SR to TR. We should be able to project that into when you get a, when this becomes zero. And it shouldn't even really be that difficult. Um, Because it's, it's, a, it's a uniform shrinkage. So what does that tell us? So um, All right, let's write some of this stuff down now. This is going to be an informal sort of way of writing it down. Do we want to uh, maybe make some text here that says what each point is equal to? Um, no, probably not. Um, so I guess we this is the, uh, we're looking at, um, rise over run, but we've got to be careful here. The rise here is going to be, no, it's going to be very difficult to compute. So I think the similar triangles is the way to go here. Okay, so if we go from C to A, and that is a distance of, um, Sx minus Tx. Horizontally, our radius shrinks from Sr to Tr. I could have sworn we've done this comp computation somewhere else. Um, so the question is, um, So the radius could be said to be the radius, this radius here, because we know these are perpen both perpendicular to the same line and therefore parallel. So we could say the radius is equal to um, TR over here um, at SX, at TX rather. And it is SR at SX. Good stuff. Okay, so I think we got it now. Um, God, I hope this actually helps solve the problem. Um, and I, I'm trying to find this easier solution because I'm convinced there is a way to do this that I'm not seeing. That is very, very simple. Um, that has to do with this angle being... Uh, both the tangent of EA over this distance and EF over tangent opposite over adjacent opposite over adjacent and we know this distance here but let's let's go with the uh, shrinking uh, the uniformly shrinking radius theorem it's not really a theorem so the radius is TR at TX it's SR at SX so at any given point um, it would be, let's see, TR, TX, okay. So, X minus TX times SX over, um, so this is a value that is, goes from zero to one uh, as we go from Tx, Tx at 0, Sx at 1. Um, so I think the radius at a given point x is going to equal this. I'm going to check that though. Okay. Let's go ahead and reset this mathic since we're using it for a very different and much simpler problem. And hopefully this one even mathics can handle. Okay, so the radius at x equals 0 is that. So the radius at tx is tr, the radius at sx is sr. Good, that's what we want. Um, so we want to know when the radius is equal, what value of uh, x makes the radius equal to 0. That's not too bad at all. Nice, simple, easy to understand answer there. Okay, so that will be 
I guess that'll be the point of our umbral cone, actually. That'll be the x value. The y value will be the same as the other values. Um, okay, good. And so the other one, I'm sure, will be exactly the same. Uh, well, similar anyway. Um, and we still don't necessarily know where point F is, although I think at this point we can figure that out. Um, well, we know the XY and point of this, and we know... I think from here we can actually find the angle, because that's just going to be... Um, I, I know we did this before. The tangent of this angle is opposite over adjacent. Actually, we can do the... Sorry, it's the arc sine. The arc sine, that's what we want. Is opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, the opposite here is just TR. Oh, actually, I should probably put this um, solution in here. Copy that over here. Uh, that's when... That's the cone... That's the umbral cone. I could have sworn we've done this before. Maybe we did it slightly differently, though. Okay, so that's where the umbral cone's x value. And the y value is just going to be the same. As it is for the centers... Of the, oh, it'll be y, in fact. Um, and then I guess what we need is the slope of this line, or we need the formula... I guess it's best if we got the formula for this line. Um, so the slope is going to be... Uh, well, we can find it in degrees and then deal with it, but let's see. Uh, so rise, which we don't know what this rise is, over run... Um, Yeah, so we know that the sine of this angle here is TR over whatever this distance is. Um, sine of angle, this is the half angle, is going to be... Uh, from the vertical, from the horizontal rather, is going to be... This, th um, there's something wrong here. This is, there's a much easier way to do this when it's not getting it. Um, opposite of our hypotenuse. Is there another way to do this? Let's see. Um, let's do it this way. TR over the distance between where T is, TX in this thing. Um, TR over TR minus... No, not TR, sorry. TX minus this thing here. And I know we've come up with these formulas before. Um, and I guess if we want, what we actually want is the tangent, not the sine, because um, that's what'll give us the um, the, the slope. Uh, okay. So from here, can we figure out E if we know this? I guess we... Yeah, I mean, it'll be the perpendicular line intersecting this line. Um, so the radius of X is equal to this. We know the value of X where it's zero. So we find the X value of where, the, uh, where this line intersects the Y axis. Not a problem so far. And we know that the um, the sine of this angle is this over this. So the angle itself is going to be the arc sine of that. Um, and the tangent of that is going to be the the um, opposite over the adjacent, which will give us this point if we wanted it. Um, none of that gives us the rise over run, though. But I think knowing this angle is sufficient. Because then we could use the uh, tangent of that angle to say rise over run. Right, the tangent of that angle actually will be uh, the, the, the slope. Okay. So I'm pretty sure there's a formula for tangent of arc sine of S. 
And if there's not, we can come up with one. Nice. And that's not surprising. There are there are quite a few uh, connections between the um, the trigonometric functions and even the hyperbolic trigonometric functions. Okay, so what we know here is the sine is this. So the tangent, so the arc sine would be arc sine. So the tangent will be this over one minus this squared, which actually might have been that other uh, expression we came up with. Um, so maybe we're not really saving anything here by doing this. Um, and so that gives us the slope of that line. We can figure out the y, the intercept by using the points that we know about. Um, from there, we can get the other line, the, the one that goes uh, this direction, cut through these arc signs. Um, I wonder if they together form some sort of weird structure that we could exploit. Like, because um, this would be a right angle here. Do they together form some sort of weird thing? Yeah, they might actually. This might actually be the angle bisector of something really interesting. And then we could do it that way. Okay, well, I'm not actually convinced that uh, this method was that much easier. But now let's see if we can um, we can use this to find out. Uh, the ultimate goal is to find out how close this line uh, comes to to the, the the Earth, the circle that's going to be here, and then the other line also, if it, how close it comes, and um, and where it whether it goes. I guess if it goes below or above is also an issue here because the Earth were like right there. You would still have a total eclipse everywhere, and um, so you need to sort of know um, whether the past point is in the positive or negative y direction when it reaches the minimum distance. Um, so. And as A and C go up and down, this is half the umbral cone. Tempted to draw the other half of the umbral cone. And it won't go through there, actually. It'll go through here. And here. Hmm. It's a strange looking structure. Anyway, um, you know, I wonder if it allowed me to rotate the whole image, and it'll turn out to be a lot clearer once it's rotated, uh, so that E and F are lined up. Uh, it probably will be actually. Okay, so what does this tell us? This tells us where the uh, the umbral cone is, the focal point of the umbral cone, uh, the slope of the umbral cone, and then all we need to do is find out. Um, And, and we can find the intercept of the umbral cone as well. In fact, we kind of did that when we said um, angle at uh, the um, radius at zero. Actually, I don't think we did here, because that then we, we need to look at a little tiny circle there and uh, figure the radius there, but that's not what we want. Um, so this is, this is actually the same thing here, so uh, let's see. Let's just trivially say this, just for fun. The sine of the angle is this, and so the tan of the angle is sine of the angle over square root 1 minus sine of the angle. Let's see what that does. This is just ugly. Let's see if this simplifies. I don't think it will. Oh. Now I know we've seen that formula before. So the sine of the angle is actually also equal to SR minus TR over SX minus TX. And I know we've seen that one before. Uh, 
And so the tangent of the angle Nice and simple. The tangent of the angle becomes this, which is also the slope, by the way. I um, wonder if that simplifies. Mm, not really. Mm. After I think I might have been... SRX minus TX square root of that minus that over that. Yeah, I don't think that simplifies a great deal. Okay, um... So we found the, the Y point. Um, the X and Y point of the, the umbral cone. We found the angle and therefore the, um, the slope. And now what we need to do is find the formula. Um... Let's see. So the formula we go through. I'm still not happy with this. But all right. Okay, so we know the x and y point and we know the slope. Uh, so we can use the, uh, the, we can solve that y equals mx plus b, uh, that y is equal to uh, whatever the shared y value is, uh, x is equal to this. And we also know that on this, um, the slope is, oh, we actually know the slope, so we can just plug that in. So we have y equals, uh, hang on a sec here. All right, so we have y equals mx plus b, where we already know that um, that's really ugly, but I think we can live with it. y equals tan ang times x plus b. And we do know that one point on y is, is what we are calling y. And a tan angle of x here is um, this sucker. Did we actually decide that was not simplifiable? Um, and it might not be actually, this is pretty simple. Yeah, it's not going to simplify any. Um, tanning x times b, and we can plug in for that. And the shared y value is equal to this sucker plus b. For b. Yep, it looks like there's really no other way around it. There, it's just going to be a complicated answer. We might get slightly simpler answer if we had uh, the y value set equal to zero. Um, and then we could just move the b intercept up by y. So that might be nice. I mean, um, if we move this whole thing down by two, um, and then moved it back up again. So if we did that, Mm. That's we're running into sort of a fundamental limitations here that uh, let's see. So the x value wouldn't change. The x value would remain um, So the x value would still the x value would still remain this sucker here. That's the point with that the umbral cone would be there. The y value would be zero. Uh, would be x val. Y val would be zero, of course, because they're both zero. Would val zero. So we just basically have this move down by this, and then the slope might be easier to compute because we would have um, zero equals. Um, tan ang. Actually, is that any simpler? Hmm. Might not be, actually. Um, 
Yeah, because we don't know for a fact that, that if that was the origin, that'd be simpler, but I don't think this is... Um, yeah, I don't think this is going to be simpler, to be honest. Yeah, and then we would just add the value of y to this, but... Well, that does look simpler, but never mind. Okay, so now we need to sort of get some of this stuff into a uh, C-Spice, uh, so we can have it there. Um, so the x value we coordinated to be this, and because we're using hard values, we might actually be able to save a little bit of computational effort here. Okay, so we da -da 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 do this, we have the rotated positions, they look beautiful, and we end up with a diagram that looks like this, and now we want to find the x value of the umbral cone, the y value will be the same as the, the shared y value between the two. Uh, which will be, um, for example, s rot 1, t rot 1, um, and maybe even temp 1. Let's go ahead and run that again to see what that does. Um, no, right, right, because we changed that to be 0, so this is fine. So the, this will be the y value, and the x value will be not too hard to compute. We just had it. Um, so I'm going to just write it like this, but obviously we'll need, we'll need to fix it because these values aren't defined like this. Um, okay. Hmm. And I guess one thing we still don't have is we need to know what the... Uh, we know now what the, uh, the umbral cone looks like. We have the two lines for it. Now we need to know uh, how close it gets to, um, to, the, to the origin, actually. Actually, that is right. We just need to know what the closest it, is gets to the origin, and if that closest value is within, R, within QR of the origin, we know it hits. Um, Although I guess we've got to be a little bit careful still with, you know, where it hits and stuff like that. Um, so if we have um, a line with... Yeah, I think we worked this out earlier. Um, we need the derivative to be minimal at... Oh, we didn't actually work that out. Okay. So if we know a line and its slope, and I'm beginning to think if we, do we really need, I guess, there's more than one way to represent a line, and this is one of those ways. So what we want to know is, um, right, those are the one that hits the two values. So we got this part done. We want to know when it's closest to the origin. So we want to know when um, the distance from the origin will be uh, x squared plus m times x plus b squared. Uh, square root of all that. Uh, we don't actually need to minimize, we can just minimize this value because the square and squ uh, the square grows with the square root. So what we want to do is solve this equal to zero for x. And we want to know where that's, that minimum is going to occur. And that actually should be very easy. I shouldn't even need to do, yeah. This guy right here. And at that point, the distance is going to be um, let's compute that. Mm, so we take that one. X given that is this, so we can say x equal to this. X squared plus m times x plus b quantity squared. Simplify. b squared over 1 plus m squared. That, these are again, this is actually the squared value, but the square root of this is going to be the minimum distance. Equal squared min distance. Okay. Okay, now... Um, let's 
So we could probably keep going in formulas here, but maybe we shouldn't. Um, although, I mean, they are just formulas. So we can find the, the X point and the Y point of the umbral cone, and we can find its... Um, I guess, actually, we just want to find the um, position of the the upper and lower, where if and where they, they get closer than R, and uh, when that happens, whether they're above um, or below, because it's possible, again, to have the, the cone, it's possible to have the Earth stuck, like, right in there where the whole thing is eclipsed. Uh, or right over here, where only part of it's eclipsed, or even right over here, where none of it's eclipsed. Now, the other thing we want to be drawing is called a penumbra, and that is going to be from this point to God knows what point here. That's going to be an other line that goes through both, that touches both of these only at one point. Um, but it's going to cross over. It's going to be the point where there's even a partial eclipse. That is going to be the, the calculation of the penumbra. And again, I get the feeling I'm doing this all wrong. I think there's a better way to do this. Um, and I just am not seeing it right now. And if we could find the tangent vector between this and this, we could actually say what the degree is between the, the umbra and the, the top of the Earth. But right now, I think I'm going to call it. I am zonked. I uh, clearly have done so. S I have succeeded in my purpose of wasting your time and my own, uh, but I think we can do better than this. So we will call it for now, though. Thank you for watching the stream, and have a good night or whatever.